Phil, where do you want to start? Um, let's see. Looks like we have a good crowd already. Um, so I just posted the HackMD in the chat. We have a few few agenda items, but I, you know, if you want to chat quickly about OSS North America. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good fun. Yeah. Um, realistically, like, so we have space reserved for tracking for like a hundred or so, and I'm thinking that's probably going to be enough based on like how many people are here. Um, and we'll be looking at September 30th at Open Source Summit North America. And really my question for this group is, um, as far as structure and content and things, do we want to be able to do a CFP? Do we want to just kind of like figure things out in here? We have some restrictions around what we can do, what we can't do, but kind of wanted to throw it over to the group here. The CFP? Uh, call for proposals. Like do like an actual like full agenda and full do like, you know, here, here's real talks and all of that. Um, or we can look at being able to do like more kind of discussions in the room. Yeah, I mean, my, my perspective, uh, which means obviously, hopefully there are others. Um, so this is just me, but, um, you know, conferences give us plenty of chances for kind of formal talks on various topics. So I'm assuming this group, um, you know, I, I think a majority of the time could easily be reserved for, you know, almost an unconference type, you know, spend the first few minutes, people write ideas, people vote, what do they want to talk about? Um, that That's my, that's my thought. Okay. So what I think I'm hearing from you is that we don't like doing a formal um, like here's our keynote, here are our talks, and here are all the things might not be as meaningful for this particular group. And I see Mike giggling, so I'll pass it to Mike next. Okay, he wants to giggle on mute. That's fine too. Yeah, so I'll say I, I think that is right. Right, the right spirit of OCI to have uh, kind of more discussions as opposed to something uh, that's formal. I do want to ask though, with this whole pandemic thing is this like an in-person thing or a virtual thing or so right now we have it set for in person um obviously we can work on being able to pivot to virtual as needed or being able to do like a hybrid piece in here again as needed right now i'm tracking for being able to say we have a room we have coffee go to town put on your hazmat suit and then go to town <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think this the reason it's set up this way is because there's an, an actual conference that is attempting to be in person that week. So clearly that could change. Um, or who knows? I, I don't, obviously I have no, no role, <laughs> no role in the conference organization, but I, I guess what I'm saying is like, I think uh, nobody knows uh, what the end of September looks like. So we're just forging ahead, assuming things get better, but if they don't, then we can pivot and do something different. So hold that day regardless. How's that? <laughs> yeah, right. I like unconference mode. Yeah, that's why I was smiling. <laughs> yeah, usually this group just needs a conference room, whiteboards. Yeah. You know. I, I was gonna say um, uh -huh. I'll be happy if there's a whiteboard available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's why I was asking before. I was like, we're going to go off and do this big show and dance thing because it doesn't really. No, seem no, no. We need work. <laughs> we, it's work group stuff. Not, not, right. Not, like, we're not really in a not, place not, right no now. No keynote. Where we... No keynote, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can come up with something for a keynote. No, it's fine. Um, uh, Brandon, you had a thought. I was just going to throw in your Jackson saying we're really good at filling an hour meeting with no agenda so we can fill a conference with a lot of good discussion okay i will i will take the general feedback as no 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 we would like whiteboards instead cool uh, on the whiteboard thing i will actually be attending virtually so okay um yeah nope it, that is good it, feedback I, okay yeah that may happen to all of us Okay. So, September's looking 
a little, a little risky right now. What is future? Who, who, who can predict the future? But okay, nope, that's good to know. I have put a note in here of no, 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 we would like whiteboards instead and virtual attendees are expected. So I, I personally have no fear, but I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> I think, I think, I think the, uh, the, the gods are, are not, not with us for uh, September. Nope, that is fine. I can, I can work on planning from there and see what happens. So um, Phil, that was all of the item that I needed to be able to cover. Cool. Sounds good. Um, and yeah, Nisha, to your point, I mean, it, it obviously we'll, we'll uh, attempt to the best of our ability to make allowance in case there, it ends up being some kind of hybrid thing, but Mike Brown will be taking pictures and like doing live, live stream of a whiteboard or something. There you go. <laughs> we'll make it that work. iPhone will travel, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so I don't, well, uh, the second, there's two agenda items listed here. Uh, the first one does have the name, the second one, but I can guess who that is by the ID, GitHub ID. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, who, who added this first one? Or this is just a distribution spec issue. The issue That's itself is Jason's. Yeah, I was surprised to see that I didn't I didn't add that, but it is my issue and I will gladly talk about it because I think it's an, an interesting topic that I'm curious about people's feedback. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it was added actually last week when we had the call, someone said, oh, we should talk about that. Uh, okay. Uh, the if I can summarize the issue, I think the latest status on that issue was someone should recommend the spec should recommend that registries and clients enforce some maximum size on a manifest because of, for safety for you know to to reduce uh, the ability to get dosed by it um, that the spec probably shouldn't state a recommend it could recommend but shouldn't require. A value like I think in the issue it was like 10 gigs might seem like a huge manifest today but might seem quaintly small in 10 years um uh if this in if people in general nod at this fact I will gladly take this to a change to the spec to recommend this enforcement without a rec without a specific recommendation for what that value should be uh, and we can sort of discuss it in more concrete terms where people nodding turns into people approving turns into changing the spec. Jason, do you mean manifest only or manifest and blob or blob oh, only? Just manifest. Blobs, it, uh, uh, it's a separate issue we might consider to say there is like registry should enforce some maximum blob size, but I think the specific issue is I can already today push a completely valid manifest that is arbitrarily large. Uh, bytes, bytes. Uh, the question in the in the chat was size limit, how bytes are entries, uh, total byte size of the manifest. So I can push it, I can push it completely because annotations are like magic bag of, of bytes. I can push a completely valid manifest that's 100 gigabytes large. And if you're fine with accepting that, uh, you should at least know that you're fine with accepting that. Uh, I uh, just want to the point out to the entry count that might that might not be possible if we are including other supplemental manifests, uh, supplemental blobs, and their manifests because those could blow up. Yeah, I think uh, again, it's a I think it's a, another separate issue, separate from blob size. Another separate issue of do we want to recommend enforcing a uh, entry count i mean like do, do we want to recommend that people uh, enforce a limit on the number of entries or not like we don't today i think uh, it was slightly more nuanced than enforcing a limit and the idea was to establish a minimum supported uh, size such that clients would know i will never exceed this size and registries would know I should support at least this size. Um, Where the the minimum is something we would recommend based on current uh, survey of current implementations 
maximums, the minimum of all of those maximum sizes. Right. So we want so we want to push registries up as reasonable as possible and push clients down to a reasonable place. And so yeah, yeah. It depends on whose perspective if it's a minimum or a maximum. Um, and I think that we talked about four megs as being the current problem like limit of Docker distribution or distribution distribution. The current practical limit that we have today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you operate a registry or a client and are surprised that a four megabyte manifest is to be considered normal, speak soon <laughs> or speak on the PR that I will send to make this a recommendation as a size. Uh, I think four megs is a perfectly reasonable size, but you might disagree. Um, it's very it, it, it feels right to have some, some table of what those limits are currently. Um, I'm, I'm just not sure if it makes sense to, to make them rules or restrictions. No, I don't think, I don't think the, the goal would be to set new requirements, n any new musts, only shoulds uh, or mays. Yeah, Should, yeah. Shoulds or mays. Is this possible um, to derive based on data? So could you look at the you know, three vendor registries and then get some average sizes and then make a small table of recommendations based on that? Yeah, I think that's a good idea for uh, for informing the value that we put into the recommendation in the spec. I don't want the spec to include a table that falls out of date quickly, but in the discussion of the of the thing we put into the spec, we should include empirical data collected from a survey of registries. Is there a way for the client to query the implementation's max size before attempting to push? There is not. I think this actually came up. Maybe it came up in that issue, in that issue but um, I don't think we want to add a new endpoint to the distribution spec to get capabilities, because that seems, I mean, maybe we do. And if we do, there's maybe, you know, a half a dozen other things that a registry could say they support up to this many layers in an image or up to this many manifests in an uh, uh, index or something. But that, that feels like a, a bigger amount of work than, than what we want. Um, at least I think so. I'm curious what other people think uh, as far as if you operate a registry and are fine with having a capabilities endpoint. What do you think? I would lean towards just uh, maybe a should in terms of the response code. Um, it's like whatever it is, like 419. It says, oh, this is too large. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I don't know about an actual API, but uh, I don't know. Because, so, go ahead. Oh, so, so then this would be a uh yeah this is a distribution spec issue not an image spec issue it's not about the validity of a 10 gig image index manifest it's about the ability to push or pull those which is distribution spec gotcha yeah and we should we should say when it's over that size you should respond with 419 or whatever too big okay i'm going to yeah, yeah, definitely not a, uh, a 500 server error or something to that effect. Well, the thing is, some of them might be returning 500 server errors today, and they uh, should. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. I think that's yeah. an issue. Uh, and as far as uh, uh, sort of trying to feel out the size limits on things, I'm probably not going to go much further than 4 meg because I really don't want to page someone. The other issue, the other uh, item in the agenda is I, I wrote a little tool to test whether registries accept the data field that's been proposed. And I tried that up to 10 meg and it worked on GCR at least. Uh, but I didn't want to go any bigger than that because who knows if it's gonna, you know, it's sort of an unexpected field. Uh, so if it blows up, I don't want to page somebody. Um, anyway, yeah, the other, the other uh, item was the, here's a handy tool to generate arbitrarily large manifests and push them to places using the data field. Um, if you only tested up to 10 meg, you got very lucky. What do you mean? That, that, that is, I believe, the exact limit. Oh, awesome. Well, I should have tried harder. Did you use a bisect? <laughs> no, I literally just kept adding zeros uh, until I felt like the number was too large and oh, I didn't want to page John. That's, that's lucky. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how they set the value themselves. So, so John, even though GCR does support 10 megs, you would still recommend that registries shouldn't uh, should enforce a limit somewhere around four megs. 
Depends on if you're asking me, the client maintainer, or me, the registry operator, uh, yeah. or me, the OCI person. I would say um, that registries should support whatever they can support and return an error if they can't. Uh, and they should support at least 4 meg or whatever we decide on. That makes sense. Uh, that's a good, yeah. I think that's a good uh, compromise that gives maximum specificity and generality. And forward evolution. And yeah, once yeah. limits are removed. Right. Um, in on the topic of the data thing, uh, the data field uh, as proposed in uh, image spec number eight twenty six. Uh, most I, I have yet to find a registry implementation that doesn't accept the data field as described in that proposal. Uh, if you know of one or can think of one or want to test it against one and see if it works or doesn't work, uh, that would be useful information. But I think there was some concern in the data field proposal that this might be it, uh, non-uniformly supported across all registries. And so far, I have yet to find data to that effect. I would contend that any registry that doesn't like that field is filing the spec that says that any field you don't know just allow through without doing anything with it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, they, they, uh, the spec says this should work. We think it works. I have now data that it proves that it works. But if we find someone that doesn't, maybe that's enough to hang up the data proposal. Um, but the ones that I've tried account for all of the ones I could think of, and some I couldn't think of that other people tried. So. Uh, I think we are good on the data field being safe to use for clients and servers. Anyway, and that's all I got. And you can use that tool to generate arbitrarily large manifests if you want to, you know, page John in the middle of the night. I'll only mess up his lunch break. I won't mess him up at night. You're so nice. That's how polite. How can I uh, avoid paging John and testing this data limit? Um, I think that John would say that they have all the safeguards in place that it won't actually page you no matter what, that it will return the correct response and not actually cause problems. I can't say the same for every possible. Yeah, exactly. Push to GHCR and you won't be a problem or push to, you know, Quay and- Yeah, page someone else, not me. <laughs> um, if, if it pages me, it should have paged me and it's a bug and we will fix it. So I don't mind if you page me, but it's probably not me getting paged, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only like uh, registry-ish provider that I've worked with is bundle.bar. And I mean, I've kind of taken liberties poking Josh about why I'm not able to, um, why I'm not able to upload blobs because there's like a data limit of this, that, and the other. And that usually happens, uh, when I try to upload S bombs, because they mm -hmm. do tend to be large. But if the limit is just for manifest, I don't really, I mean, I cannot, I don't have the imagination to think like where in the manifest can people add metadata about the S bombs and what kind of metadata would they add? Like, I don't, I don't have. I mean, uh, yeah, I cannot think about anything like that, but I have seen the community just put all kinds of fields that, to cover all different kinds of use cases that I've never thought about. So, so the, the way think, this will get you with the SBOM, if you've got, say, a large blob that's your SBOM of a bunch of data, is that someone could then take that and put it in the data field within the manifest. Yeah, um, I'm trying to avoid that. Yeah, uh, putting I, it I think that's why we're saying we want to put limits. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a possibility that people will use the data field to stick a very giant S bomb. Um, yeah. Right, and they and they could, and it's up to the registry to stop them 
with a sane response if the SBOM you're pushing, whether through data or blob or annotations or any other thing, um, <clears throat> if that's too big. Um, okay, I'm gonna send a PR to start talking about recommending a size limit of four megs at least, and we can start collecting empirical data from many registries to see what they currently actually support. You mean a size minimum, not a size limit, right? Uh, right, a minimum recommended, a, a minimum recommended maximum manifest size. Is this a floor of uh, maximum and a this, ceiling? <laughs> of maximum? This is what registries should support and what clients should avoid going above. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not a minimum size. We're not saying all manifests must be four megs or larger. Uh, we can pad it with zeros to, to make it up to the, to the maximum size. No, uh, uh, clearly there is some wording help needed here uh, and your input will be useful. Do we have a feeling hey. for if we want to do the data field, what kind of turnaround time to get that approved into the descriptor spec? Thinking of, for me, compiling Go code against this. Is, is the question how quickly after it's approved can we have it in the Go client and the Go library? How, just how quickly we're thinking if we like this data field and we've already got the PR sitting out there to approve it, um, how quickly the, the OCI maintainers feel like this could potentially turn into actual code that's approved. Like in specs go, we just yes. click merge, right? Yes, that, that's the question. How long? Um, I will hit merge as soon as enough people have approved it. So, yeah, it's already been reserved in config descriptor, so it's it's fair. The, I, the I reason for the question is, do I need to make a fork and do some testing on my stuff, or is this just going to get approved within the next week or two, and it's not worth my time? I don't think there's a reason not to try it out before it's approved. I don't know how long it will take to get approved. It's taken a while to get. It's been proposed for a while already, so I assume it's not going to get approved in the next by the end of this sentence. But um, you know, I don't. I don't actually remember what the remaining hangups were on it. I think it was in general like registry support and the size limits and registry support check, as far as I know, and size limits tbd but also it's it's unrelated because you can already push without data you can push a four and a half megabyte manifest so we should have that limit regardless of data um yeah maybe it's just a matter of pinging the data proposal and saying hey image maintainers image spec maintainers you're talking about a26 on the image spec or Eight two six, I think. Yeah, John's. Yeah, yeah. Eight two six. Anyway, I got to run, but I'm going to send a PR for the recommended. Wording is hard. Recommended max min size. All right. See you, everyone. <laughs>you want to talk about working groups? Yeah, I, I was going to ask, what's the uh, status on the TOB um, stuff about working groups? Yeah, so we have, uh, I think Amy just summarized that in the PR itself, like six out of nine LGTMs. I had a question about one of them being like a full, like a uh, LGTM, but I think we're good to go here. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, it'd be nice to have the kind of responses. There were, there were several LGTMs um, that were like, hey, you know, I see this feedback here and it sounds like that's a good update, but, you know, I think we're good. And John, I think you pointed out, you know, it'd be nice to see the outcome of, you know, those None of them were, were you know, life-changing updates, but they were, they were kind of good clarifications. So 
Um, I don't know if Steve is going to like respin that before merge. It'd be nice. I think that would be the right thing. I mean, we have the LGTMs, but if he can provide the updates, um, then I think, yeah, I think we're ready for that uh, version to. So I think in. part of the issue is that there is a lot of different like kind of feedback kind of wandering around out there. Um, and, and I think the last PR on this one actually had a like pretty good. We're gonna have to go pull it up. Sorry. Yeah, so there's a comment on the poll request at the very end. Um, and it is like um, uh, John Johnson. Um, was the one that, that has best like the uh we can address these in follow-up prs and i'll just drop the comment in here as well so like we're all kind of on the same page yeah i've uh, i read through the pr and i had nothing really to contribute because um yeah i ha i haven't seen anything like that's been implemented or implemented successfully and so i I have no idea whether this is good or not. Yeah, I mean, we also, we don't have to merge this. I mean, we could start going through the motions as if this were merged and then decide if it is good. Um, but I don't know if they're like, officially we have to merge something before some process can begin. I think that's okay. To, I mean, that's my opinion. I think it's okay to merge it and then update it later if we find that, uh, you know, something's not working. Yeah, I think it's okay to kind of mark something as a draft and be like, this is our first shot, subject to change. We're all human here. Um, I, I reviewed this a couple of times and I think my biggest, I guess, like concern as a community member, if you wanted to, if you want to call it a concern, is that like the structure of working groups like this these documents, for example, provide enough structure to as to say, like, this is here to support you and to help foster like collaboration, as opposed to like the other stance that where it can take where it's like, we are like the rulers and these are the rules you must follow and like, and we're watching you and we're going to dismantle your working group if you mess up. So like, I wanted to kind of make sure that 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 the feel of the document didn't go in like that direction. And it's not to say anything about OCI, but like um, there tends to be a lot of like, I don't know, if I, maybe this is just me, but I noticed that there, there can be some like aggressiveness in open source communities and like not, and I think fostering this really friendly open culture is just really uh, important to be successful. I think it would be a good idea to start at least deciding what initial working groups we would spin off at this time. And maybe um, as uh, Vanessa said, like see how much of, um, you know, how many people want a certain thing versus another thing and find some like overlap or common ground. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really up to those who have an idea or a an area that they want to go, um, you know, join with some other folks with similar interests and, and do that. So the the TOB, uh, at least the current TOB, uh, hopefully would be you know nothing like what Vanessa was just talking about. I mean, we we all have have enough work in our own plate to be micromanaging a bunch of groups and trying to tell them what to do or when to start or stop. Like the, uh, the whole idea was to provide enough of a framework that people with common interests that revolve around the OCI specs uh, can just go, you know, have a place to, to do that work. Um, so, you know, I, I think like John is saying, may, maybe, uh, including me, maybe I've been too hung up on like, you know, getting this done and then, you know, having people uh, propose some groups, you know, you know, we can, we can say now's the time, like propose some groups and, and let's, you know, get things rolling. So, um, and, and back to the PR itself, like I, 
I think there's just like, if I scroll back through, there's a bunch of kind of knit like things that maybe we can just summarize for Steve. Uh, and then there's a few kind of open questions. Like I, I, I think if we just summarize that, maybe that helps get it, you know, kind of here's the last one, two, three things. And, and that kind of resolves current feedback. Uh, yeah, that's kind that of where well. I Thank you. Okay. So, so Phil, you're suggesting that somebody could like currently suggest a working group and ask if they could, I mean, I guess, uh, as you said, you don't want this to block spinning off a working group. Uh, so like, for example, if I want to say like, hey, I want to start a working group on uh, container supply chain transparency, short for SPOM, I suppose. Then, um, is that it? What do I have to do? Yeah, so I think um, there might even be. Uh, where is it? So, so when we first started this discussion, you know, Steve, who couldn't be here today. Uh, wanted to propose one around reference types. And so issue 96 in the TOB uh, repo has, you know, I, I think a, a rough uh, format that probably is worthwhile for others who want to propose. So open an issue, here's our objectives, here's what we're trying to accomplish, here's the people involved. Um, and yeah, so you, uh, I'll paste that in the uh, chat so other people can see what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I think that step one is just, you know, it, it does not need to be extremely detailed, but kind of this format is helpful because it lets everyone else know kind of what, what you're trying to do. And it may be a good place to rally others who are interested in the same topic say, oh, yeah, I'd like to be involved. Um, and then I guess we should read this uh, charter PR to see what that means. The TO, I think the TOB just sort of says, yep, sounds good. Go forth. Um, and that that's, yeah, step one is just effectively somebody proposes it and there's, there's some defined scope and some goals and we all say, okay, yep, sounds good. Um, and then from there, I think there's a lot of, uh, hopefully lightweight process. We just need to figure out, you know, how, how often do you wanna come back to this call and say, here's our update or where are you gonna keep status and kind of some working uh, docs on what you're up to. Uh, but that's effectively, I think all that's needed to get going. Okay. There's a few other TOBers here in case anyone has a different opinion. I'm talking just because no one else is. Say, for example, um, like currently there's a proposal for reference types, um, but you are coming from uh, the perspective of a specific use case that may leverage reference types um do would it be useful to submit a proposal for a specific use case i mean i think that comes back to do the scope and goals of the, of the current proposal fit with what you and, and others are trying to accomplish. And if not, then maybe it becomes a discussion about whether there needs to be a different proposal. But I think that's why each working group needs to have kind of a clear scope and set of goals so that you can decide, oh, that doesn't really fit what I'm, I need to put together something different because I, you know that doesn't, the scope of this 
working group doesn't really cover what I want to accomplish. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I don't have anything more to add. No, that's good. Good questions. So shall we reconvene next week? Looks like we're out of topics. Yeah, uh, nothing else on the agenda. Anything that someone wanted to cover that hasn't come up? Yeah, I feel like a, a broken record, but I, I still haven't figured out um, what could be the next step to deploying the RFC Jekyll template for the OCI docs. Uh, I, I did ping Vincent, but I think he's busy um, because he hasn't responded yet. So I, I think just someone in a position of power to like create repos and stuff probably needs to help me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought Vincent was going to follow up with that. We, uh, we can give them more time. I, I actually just pinged them this morning. Um, so if we can wait till next week. It's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, so no, cool. I mean, if, if nothing happens by next week, um, let us know. I, I The OCI is one GitHub org that I'm never quite sure who has powers to do what. Um, so, but we can figure that out if we need to. When, when in doubt, ask Chris Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, I think we're, sounds like we're good for today. Um, so yeah, talk to everyone next week. Have a good one. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Phil. Yep. Bye.